All right, now we have everything. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Laura Kokkila. I'm an investment director at InVenture. Um, InVenture is a journalistic VC fund. So we've been around since 2005, investing in more than 65 startups across Nordics and Baltics area. Uh, we invest in seed and early stage, which means that we invest between 300,000 to 3 million euros uh, tickets when we invest. Um, lately, um, we've been more and more looking at purpose-driven startups. Um, and uh, as you heard from the previous uh, presentation, this is not only a game that only investment um, purpose, sorry, only impact uh, investing funds are looking at. Um, so I wanted to sort of show how a journalistic VC is looking at this. What are the perspectives that we are taking in the companies that we invest in? I'm a very optimist and, and say this is a new, new wave that will kind of transform the way companies are built in this de uh, the following decade. Um, and I'll show you first a few examples on how, what we've been investing to and why. Um, and later I'll go deep dive showing how to kind of build a competitive advantage from the purpose-driven uh, ambition that you have. So a few of our recent investments that we've done. First of all, Swappy. Uh, we led Swappy's A round um, in, uh, in May last year, uh, 5 million euro round. What Swappy does is they buy, ref uh, they buy broken iPhones from the market, whether it's consumers, businesses, phone operators, uh, whatnot. Uh, they refurbish the iPhones and sell them back to consumers and give a guarantee that the phone will work as a new iPhone. What is significant about this is that every single phone they sell, they reduce the global uh, foot the footprint uh, of the phone by 80%. Um, and if you compare to this, let's say, cars, typically uh, now 70% of the car market is second-hand cars, whereas in phones, 99% is al almost bought as new. So we see this a one big sustainability trend where we start to use refurbished electronics instead of always buying new. A second company uh, which we just launched um, the investment in, in January, together with some of the largest venture capital funds here in the Nordics, Crandum and North Zone, uh, we invested in Nokua Foods. What Nokua Foods is trying to do is trying to find plant alternative uh, foods for, the, um, for some of the areas that we most like. Starting from one of the most difficult ones, which is vegan cheese. Because if you today try to find a vegan cheese from the market, they will be either crazy expensive, or they will simply not taste good. And the third example, Mojo Diagnostic, um, a deep tech startup that's focusing on fertility. Um, so they believe that everyone has a right uh, and every family has a right for a child. Uh, but today, um, if you go for a fer fertility care, 75% uh, of those cases will be unsuccessful. So they want to raise that bar, um, um, the success rate from 25% to uh, 75%. But why now? Why are we now investing in these kind of companies? Um, this wasn't the case in 15 years. This wasn't the case in 20 years ago. Um, so something has been clearly happening. And I think that it's a very simple answer. The narrative in the tech ecosystem and the society has changed. Um, when back in 2010, we were all, all praising about Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. He was chosen as the person of the year in, in Time magazine. And in, the, in that article, uh, the reporters were um, praising on how Facebook has so much data about their users and how they're more powerful than any of the modern states um, in the world. But now the narrative has changed, and Mark Zuckerberg looks a lot different in 2018 in the court when they're facing the allegations regarding um, the elections. Uh, and this Cambridge Analytica uh, crisis probably was one of the key triggers uh, of chasing the narrative. And if we look at the kind of the bigger picture and maybe draw a more consult consultant-driven uh, slide on it, I think we moved from being mission-driven companies to a more purpose-driven companies. Um, whereas before, we were very product and service centric. So what Google said is that we want to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible. But still, their business model was about selling ads. So the business model wasn't actually correlated on what they were doing. Whereas now, if, when we look at what's the impact to the society, we're looking at the entire company and also the indirect impact that these companies are making. Also on the stakeholder side, previously we were very focused on 
looking at what are the customers, what are the employees uh, of these companies. Whereas now we moved into looking at what's the whole society uh, thinking about this company. A good ex example is, I think, regulation, whereas previously it was okay to have a motto to move fast and break things. A company these days would be really outdated if they would come out with that uh, quote. Whereas now you're talking about we want to comply with the current regulation. We want to be okay with the GDPR. And of course, EU is uh, one of the front runners in this, this space. So that's why I think your company advantage in the future will, will not only be about tech. It won't only be about your current employees. It will be the underlying purpose on why your company actually exists. And I, I think purpose has become one of your key competitive advantages in this decade. A competitive advantage of any company, whether you're a B2B SaaS, whether you're doing something on the consumer front, uh, uh, or, or in, let's say, deep tech, you can be quite easily divided by three areas. Um, and all these, these three areas you'll need in order to grow your startup. You'll need capital to fund your growth. You'll need new talent to actually do things. And you'll need customers to actually increase your revenue. And in all of these front, purpose and impact will have a positive impact, and I'll show you next why. Starting from money, as we investors always do. Um, as you also heard from, uh, from the previous presentations, the amount of funding in, in impact investing has been hugely increased uh, over the past years. We're still talking about a very small fraction, but if there is $500 billion uh, dollars in the market looking for new opportunities, this will start to affect on what kind of startups you get funding. Um, and it's not only these impact investors. Atomico, which is one of the largest venture capital funds in Europe, two days ago released their new fund. And how they framed on what kind of companies they're going to be investing. They said, we're going to deliver, uh, we're going to be, we partner with ambitious founders who deliver positive transformational change across every aspect of our society and economy. So even a very established player in the Europe is now claiming that they're going to be focusing on more positive uh, and transformational change. And I think we're also starting to see this from the kind of ground up. If we look at where, which type of companies have got funding uh, over the last past five years, um, more purpose-driven, more impact-driven companies are actually receiving more and more funding every year. And I think this is only the start of this kind of wave. In this same study, um, State of European Tech, they, they, re, uh, they asked European VCs, how do you look at the impact? And 80% of European VCs replied that before they do the investment, they assess the social and the in environmental impact of their of the startup. So it starts to affect on all, all VCs on how they actually look at companies and which kind of companies they back up. And also we've seen it in practice. Uh, Elsa Science, uh, where we invested uh, in 2018, uh, just received funding uh, from Norsken uh, earlier this year. Moving on to talent. I think everyone in the audience should be pretty obvious by now. Uh, that millennials are the biggest, um, biggest labor force in the United States and globally, uh, which will start to affect on how employees um, look at new job opportunities um, when they're applying for a new job. Um, if you look at this graph, on the red you'll see um, what millennials think their businesses that they're working for should be trying to achieve. On the blue, however, they say um, what they think their businesses are actually doing. So many millennials think they're, they're actually their current employees are too much focused on the profit instead of making an impact to the society and improving and protecting the environment. I think this creates a, a competitive advantage for startups to actually start focusing on the, on the two things on the right. And on a more practical level, uh, if you look at what are some of the most sharpest, sharpest minds um, building? Uh, Shorosh, previously founder at Video Plaza, they raised more than 20 million in funding and was acquired by Ola, 
What did he do as, as his second startup? He founded a vegan cheese company, Nokua Foods. Same thing, Sami Inkinen, uh, co-founder of Trulia, uh, that was acquired with 2.5 billion uh, by Zillow. What is he now doing? He's trying to solve the ty type 2 diabetes with his uh, new company, Vieta Health. And we are seeing the same trend happening on, on, on the operational side as well. Many of the startups in our portfolio that have a purpose-driven uh, mission, um, for them it's a lot easier to hire uh, new talent because they are working on these uh, problems. And then lastly, about the customer side, the most important thing uh, and your revenue source. Um, referring to the same millennial study that uh, we discussed earlier on this stage, 42% uh, would change their relationship with an impact uh, with a business due to a positive impact. And this is kind of the, one of the main reasons a customer, whether it's B2B or B2C, uh, would change a relationship with a business if they can find a more sustainable solution to work with. And I think it's important to understand that this is not only happening in B2C, because I think that's pretty obvious for us, because as consumers, we're, we're spending money uh, more ethically all the time. But also business have been pressured uh, during the past, let's say, five years to become more purpose-driven and more sustainable. Many of the big tech companies have seen their own employees almost rioting against them in order to do more ethical so choices and sustainable so choices in addition to the uh, pressure coming from the media and the society overall. And as, as sort of concrete examples, um, the big tech has made big commitments on becoming more sustainable. So Google has said that all their consumer devices, sorry, from 2022, will, have, uh, car will be carbon neutral. Same thing with Microsoft. All of their products and services will be carbon neutral by 2030. Amazon will be carbon neutral by 2040. All of these companies are investing a lot of money in order to become more carbon neutral. What they're basically doing is creating a new kind of market. Market for these kind of solutions that they can use to actually reduce their own uh, global foot, um, footprint. So I think all these areas are fueling in to your competitive advantage. There might be investors that will be looking at your, ta uh, your team. There might be investors that will be looking at how much you manage to raise. There might be investors that will be looking at how, how much is your revenue, who are your customers. But underlying all these three themes is purpose. So you can drive, uh, you can hire better people, you can get access to more capital, and you can get more customers if you're working on a purpose-driven company. And maybe, maybe to shock you uh, in the end, um, when we looked at, or set of European Tech looked at the companies where these purpose-driven companies are built, um, the larger ones on the scale are pretty obvious. UK, France, Germany uh, is where most of the purpose-driven companies are built. Naturally, these are big markets and most of the startups are also located in these countries. Uh, of course, Sweden is outbeating uh, compared to its size, as they always do. But if you look at the bottom end, that's where the sh shock comes in. Latvia wasn't in this, in this entire data set, but Estonia and Lithuania are among the least performing countries in this graph. In, I think Baltic has a very big opportunity to become more purpose-driven. Uh, we, we see exceptional entrepreneurs here that are focusing on building exceptional products, but I think this is the next step that the Baltic ecosystem has to take building more purpose-driven companies and actually taking them off the ground. Because there's no reason why Baltics couldn't be uh, one of the hubs uh, for pr purpose-driven companies. That's why I have, uh, as all good keynotes, a few call to actions for you. So I think you should be looking at yourself and then we are thinking, why are you part of this company? Why are you founding this particular company? What is the real impact that you're actually making to this world? Is this the, the business you want to be working for? And, and secondly, think about how do you want to frame it? How do you frame the story for investors, for future employees, for current employees and your customers? Because it's, it comes all the down to the story. And I think the storytelling in, in purpose-driven companies is the key. If you don't, don't manage to capture the idea through a story, it will be very difficult for anyone to be convinced uh, that you actually are making a purpose. 
Yeah, and ending with, that, with the famous quote, there's never been a better time to become a purpose-driven entrepreneur. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.